Okay. Okay, let's let's get this started. Give us our intro. And put the game of your binder back. Hello everybody, welcome to Neo Streams. My name is Alex Shot. With me as always, former national champion Chris Pullup, and what we're talking Man, about I today. I love it when you say that. <laughs> uh, and what we're talking about today is big basics. We got a couple different brews here for you, and this one is gonna be kind of a, a long shot, one that's built kind of around a mix of tornadoes. And uh, Bouffant, and uh, well, I guess all of them, because this is a basic... Mewtwo and Landers. Music, you can't yeah. leave Landers and Mewtwo well, and go Tra- straight to Bouffant. And then Trachean, I guess, too. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I don't, it's the basic, basic Mewtwo. The, the basic idea <laughs> here is that you're running a deck with two types of energies. Uh, so let's just get down to the, base, right. the energies first. Energies? Uh, I mean, it's very, very simple. simple. Four double colors energies, seven fighting, and... It's basically what good basics can you jam into the deck off of these two types of energies. And, and what you the in, interesting thing with this kind of deck is you have a lot of options. You can mix the numbers up. And this is a deck I've done more time testing against than playing with. I'll be the first one to say that. Um, all these cards are great. The numbers, you can tweak to personal preference. Definitely have to work on those guys. Um, the basic idea is you have big, durable guys, different weaknesses. Each of them have different strengths and applications. And you just jam a number of them in there, and you are a very aggressive deck and fairly resilient. Um, you do have to put pressure on your opponents. There are a lot of decks that will beat you as they set up if you don't have an advantage going on. So you have to be fast. Um, Cards like it's Landers. a very consistent deck. It just needs basics. You have eight really good openers there. Mewtwo's and Landorus and Tornadus are all absolutely fantastic to open with. They can attack on the first turn, do a good amount of damage, and they all have pretty hard-hitting attacks as well. So you can really tweak the numbers. We have a couple of other. We have another variant I will built on here one. afterwards with some of these Pokemon in it. I like that one a little bit more, but you we'll like it a little bit more. That, we'll talk about that later. Okay, um, but yeah, no, we've uh, got uh, Mewtwo. It's a good attack right now. Well, let's, oh yeah, let's just break down the attack. We're going to start with Mewtwo. He is the linchpin of the format, kind of in every deck. Uh, X Ball. That's the attack. We're going to talk about him here. I mean, you're running double colors energies, you're running fighting. You can't ever use side drive, but it is an indication of how often side drive happens. I've probably last, used it twice. The last uh, deck tech we did, well, I couldn't remember the name of it. So I think I did. You, you got it. You I actually slept that. I think I did. But we already remember if they were hyphens or not. I think we both got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. No, I was correct, I think, on, on both of them, because I remember X-Ball. No, I could have sworn X-Ball had one. I'd have lost, lost money on it. I have videotape. But anyways, so you two, X-Ball, turn one, hopefully 40, turn two, 60. Or 80 if you get another DCE. It's a great way to open. A lot of decks are not really able to handle the early pressure. If you go first with them, you can really take an early lead. Um, this is a deck that is more than capable of fighting a full blown Mewtwo War. So if you lead with an aggressive Mewtwo and they do have the return kill, they're playing right into what you want to be able to do. So by running three, a lot of decks are only running two, unless they're playing like a big basic style of deck. So they can't really keep on it. We're, we are running plus powers. Like we're able to run the. We're able to take. We're, we're able to force the Mewtwo War, and that's something. A lot of times you can just hope to en- engineer a game state where they have to start killing your Mewtwo's. So if they do have an answer to Mewtwo, it's actually playing into kind of your game plan as well. So uh, again, he's good. He's good against Keldeo, who is admittedly something that you don't have a lot of game. You don't have against a bunch of raw game against. You have to kill some Squirtles early. You can two shot the Keldeo. They're not really one shotting you all that well. Eh, probably, yeah, and they can, they, but they, at that point they're leaving themselves open to Mewtwo in general. Just Mewtwo right. DCE. Kills so if they have six energies, no, they, it's Mewtwo DCE. It does not plus kill power. six. Yeah. They need it, if they're one shotting your guys, then they need you know, with a plus power and a DCE, you can one shot them. Yeah, uh, but guys, the the real reason this is we're not talking about Mewtwo. This is uh, unlike unlike uh, Keldeo or unlike Eels. This isn't, a, or even Dark Eye. This is a deck where we're attacking with Mewtwo on turn one. We want to be doing that. That is not a, it is a good starter. Yeah, it's not so much a reactive card as it's been in a lot of the other builds. With this, something that you power up once you get energy acceleration play. This is a very tempo-based deck. You want to be on the aggressive. We want to be capturing the base. We want to be capturing the base and killing it with Mewtwo. That's what we want to be doing to time. Well, okay, this is the this is the general game plan of the deck. This isn't a secondary thing that, hey, and you know, if you play DC in this deck, Mewtwo can do this. This is what we want to be doing. And Mewtwo's the best at it. Or, uh, well, or no, no, Landers might be. We have, we have uh, three very good openers here, and uh, that'll I'll touch on something once we get done with the Pokemon here, evolving this. But let's get Tornadus off, since we're on the top. Tornadus of yeah, well, he's maybe at the bottom, but I, we yeah, still love him. I love him. Yeah. Uh, let, let's blow through Tornadus here, real quick, see? 
For 60? Yeah, I, I can't stop the puns. <laughs> uh, they're not even good puns, either. They're <laughs> pretty shitty. <laughs> yeah, they're really <laughs> awful. But, um, anyways, he's another great attacker. Um, turn 160, if you have That's plus power, you can do well, turn 170s. Very um, very, every time I play against a deck with this guy, he will kill me turn one. I won't see a turn. Always, always six. Happen at cities, happen at battle roads. Like, I haven't played in very many actual sanctioned events this year. And every Your time, I'm getting been. killed by a Tornadus. Your basics should have 80, eh, like 100 HP, so they can't even do it. I'll find a way for that not to be safe. Like, they'll hit all four plus powers. That's their hand, is just Tornadus DC. Stadium four plus powers. Sta- stadium four plus powers. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, Stay- <laughs> anyways. So, hits for 60, very aggressive attacker. And, solid. again, Power Blast, if you go 60 into 100, you're killing EX on turn oh, two wow, with a plus yeah. power, obviously. And you have, we're we're going to three plus to powers yeah. for Skylas. Uh, well, actually, I think we're down to three Skylas in this deck. But. It's three in this one, but, uh, yeah, that, he no, is, he's, he's, he's good. He's different great. attacker, different uh, different weakness, different resistance. Like I actually very much... Uh, how much do you like the uh, the resistance to fighting? In this? Resistance to fighting is very good. Like, Landers is good. Tra- like, Pretty track much all play. Landers. Yeah, it... Landers does not have a good time against this guy. Um, like, he's quick enough that he actually can, like, two-shot a Keldeo. So he's actually, like, if you go first with him, like, you can actually put some pressure on against the Blastoise deck. And, like, I, I personally feel that this deck is an underdog against Keldeo Blastoise. I don't I think it's unwinnable at all. I've seen you can be a number of times where this deck ends up beating Keldeo Blastoise, but I think that you really do have to be in the favorable in the variance a little bit. If I had to put a number on it, I think it's 60% in favor of Keldeo. Which isn't bad. I don't mind. And that's I, prior, it's possible that's prior to skill. Numbers, folks. You right. can, uh, the place There's not a lot you can add to, to fix this matchup without going real deep and like adding Shaman and yeah, trying true. to fix, mess with the energies, which I don't, I don't like. Maybe. But like it's kind of rough. Uh, the last giant basic, the, uh, well, my, well, probably my favorite giant basic is Lander CX. Something we have uh, haven't talked about in a deck as of yet, but uh, something we've talked about against a lot. Uh, the tech we're using most of the time is Hammerhead. It's 30 to the active, 30 to a bench. Uh, that's the aggressive start you want against a lot of things, and if you want to talk about how good he is in this format. Well, one of the things that, I mean, like, the electric deck oh, is it just oh, so that's good against absolutely it. absolutely like, amazing. Against again, it. like, I know that for most of the metagames, the Eels deck has kind of tapered off a little bit in terms of popularity. Because of the amount of blast stories here, it's kind of spiked up a little bit. I mean, it, and, if, and if they haven't been playing, and it's only because they forgot. And, and, uh, and actually very good. you ran into an issue where initially there was a lot of hype behind Landorus, and obviously the card's fantastic. Oh, yes. And it is as good as advertising against deals. Like, that card is very good against it. Mm-hmm. And I have complete understanding why people want to shy away from this because of Landorus and the threat of Landorus. But with Keldeo Blaster is proving to be very, very good, it's kind of pushed players away from Landorus a little bit, and the metagame's kind of shaped more around Keldeo than it has around Landorus. And the metagame actually became a little more favorable for Eels now, as it's favorable against the best deck, and it's bad. And the deck that it's bad against is very weak, is traditionally pretty weak to Keldeo. So it's a justifiable deck. With this guy, like even just running two of them is going to be funny to be able to just punish them. And it it's also a great opening attacker. Puts 60 damage down for one energy. Lets you spread it out. Lets you threaten kills. Like you can set up a lot of plays with it. It gives okay. you a lot of a lot of reach. Lets you uh, really set up stuff. Hit bench guys. Yeah, it's. it's like, you'd be surprised how difficult it can be in some games. Like, I can obviously consider myself to be a pretty good player, and I've had a lot of games where I have lost, and I thought back like, well, this game would have been well within my reach had I played my hammerheads differently. Yeah, like, like the, and it's the really hard. Like you're running into like a situation where it's like, you really have to have a lot of foresight into how the game is going to progress. And what each hammerhead placement is going to change, and was, it's very difficult to correctly do it all the uh, time. Yeah, I was playing. Is this anything uh, like kind of like Night Spear? I was going to say I was playing a game against uh, I think it was Kelly Blastoise with uh, Night Spear, a uh, uh, Darkrai variant. I think it was Darkrai Hydrogen, and it was I was just like thirty on that guy. Wait a minute, no. Uh, and it's it, it's not as easy. It's not as just a thirty on that Some guy. Some games are real easy. So against like eels or something. But the it, tough decisions hey. are very tough. Yeah, the, the times when your opponent's got a bunch of Caldeos and a Mewtwo on his bench, you, you do having to do that math in top of your head of, hey, now my Mewtwo's are going to have to do the X, Y, and Z to kill it. Um, it's, it's, very, it's, it's very difficult to try and figure out. It becomes out. more difficult because you have to also go into depth as to, if you place 30 somewhere, how are they going to change how they approach it? Because where you place your damage, you can, you can change what lines they Yeah, you can really get them with uh, There's a few levels for Hammerhead, and 
I think that's one of the reasons I enjoy playing the card so much. It's it's a cool card, and it and it, and what's cool about it is you can go real deep turn one, and it's like depending on what they what they open with, and that can change a lot of lines of play. Yeah, and then against like Darkrai, like this card is actually surprisingly not that good against Darkrai with Hammerhead because you have three hitting it, four hitting it if they have an EVO light. But lands just it though. On the other hand, right, but they're like, a lot of them are in like the crushing hammers and stuff, so they can actually keep you off of that. True. Like I mean, I don't think those, those are the straight lander. Those are straight, straight dark eyes, yeah. opposed to what the hydrogen deck that we where <laughs> you're gonna get that lands judgment and you're gonna oh, judge you're, them you're gonna crush them. Yeah, no, I, I mean Landers is one of my favorite cards right now. I'm hoping that Keldeo dies down a little bit so I can play him more. Uh, one of my favorite cards, however, is Terrakian, who is uh, has just been going hard since he's come out in uh, whatever Noble Victories or whatever he came out of in. And he's just been... He looks so innocent and not that great. Like, when uh, I first read him yeah. when he came out, I, I, w- I would say this much. If he wasn't fighting, I don't think that he would no. see nearly as much play as he does. No, he kills he kills Zekroms and uh, a bunch of... Uh, just a bunch of popular Pokemon, he can kill them one hit. And that's right. why he's good. And he's a good non-EX attacker, tough to hit, tough to kill. Like, Lance Crusher's good. Yeah, I've done... Yeah. I've used it I'd kill way more often than I'd like to admit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, even, a, even in Eel Box, like, I'll put two prisms on him. Maybe. I've done it. Sometimes you sometimes you gotta crush some things. So Drake, not a lot to say. Like, retaliation, retaliate. Excuse me. Will kill a dark ride without an evil light. It will kill. Uh, and we're running plus powers, so you, like, you can it get can even kill evil it with light. an evil light. Like, so again, because um, all the choose crapper, we have a lot of outs to get around the evil light. We uh, we acknowledge the fact that Landorus isn't going to be the best against a speedy uh, dark ride deck with like hammers and stuff. Mm-hmm. So you do have to have, even though like Landorus will be your fighting type of choice in a lot of matchups. Like you do want to have retaliate here as an I option, like and I, I don't think I've seen less playing two of them. I think that's a little bit excessive if you're running the super rod. I think it's more of a specific card for certain scenarios. I don't think you're gonna ever really want to use two in a game, except against like the Sigalith decks, and that's another reason yeah, why I, I like I having the track here. It's very good against Sigalith. Um, you have that and the Buffalon. The Buffalon's not oh. particularly good against it. Let me tell you about the gold standard. The gold the standard. Gold Buffalon. standard of. Of standard. Go standard's gold standard. Modified yeah, standard, point. yes. <laughs> Modified yeah. standard, whatever you want to call we had it. To go with mo- we had to go with standard because it fits with the gold standard. <laughs> the gold standard, he boofers. And he also breaks gold. And yeah. uh, that's this 60, guy is plus 60 to an EX. So, uh, just really good in EX exchanges. Um, you can tank him. We're, we're running the Tornado, so we're obviously running stadiums. We're running, uh, I think it's Asperia. Asperia City Gym. Right, so you're going to have 120. If you go with the EVO lights, 140. Effective hit points like oh even more than that with 160 with Boofer that's absolutely like, it's really hard for an EX to kill it like um, you're dealing a lot of damage with Gold Breaker it really helps in the EX exchanges he's just a tank of a Pokemon and he's another guy that can hit like Sigalith and stuff he's not necessarily great against Sigalith but I really am not a fan of the Sigalith decks I think they're really gimmicky I think most decks can exploit them I will say for a fact that I think Sigalith is it's just a, kind of a joke. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna go into a city playing a Sigalith, I think that you're you're accepting they're gonna go three two. You're just gonna accepting marginal. You're not accepting like. A, like I mean, I, I think that it had a bit of an advantage when, when no, no one, one cared playing. about it. I mean, I now that if, you, a, if you play one card against Sigalith, if 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 Radials is playing a Zekrom, they're gonna just crush that deck. It's not it's not gonna be very close. Like. It's to see, you and know what I'm the uh, the one thing that, that I've seen people play is they're basically building a deck where they aggressively hunt down everything that can kill a Sigalith, and then they just kind of wally with Sigalith. I don't know how effective that is. It could probably work in some matchups and not so much in others. I don't feel like any of the lists we've put out there are particularly vulnerable to Sigalith, and I don't think that was without us actively trying to deal with Sigalith necessarily. This is, closest, and I, think this is be I could actually see this closest. losing to Sigalith. Just because if you had a second Terrakion, I think that shows oh, the matchup up. I think we can beat it. But I mean they're running with hammers and stuff, so like I can see it. Right. But, uh, but yeah, this is the this is the Pokemon we're playing with, which is uh we sp- we spent a while on them because they're the most important part of the deck. These, these, these are all Pokemon we haven't just... really touched on in other deck techs either. Oh no, besides so. Mewtwo, uh Tornadus, Lander C X, we've talked about what he's done to the metagame, but right. we haven't talked about him in specific, how to play him, how to play your hammerheads out. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Terrakian, the, him, him. The card that I'd love to try with this deck also oh, is, it? is uh, Ditto. Because I... we have a bunch of different good openers, and having Ditto, which is effectively a wild card that allows you to... Make sure Ultra Balls and stuff a lot better for right. you. Or depending on it lets what you be playing. super reactive in terms of what you want to exploit of their active. So I think this could be a deck that would love to have something like that. And right now we're only running 10 Pokemon. 
Which isn't bad, because they're all beefy. Like, you're not going to get turn one or anything. But oh, I, I do know. feel like uh, if Mulligan's a little more than I'd like it to, you have two guys that you really don't want to open with, being Tracky and Bufalot. And they're not awful opens. Oh, and you will open Bufalot's them. okay. Like, your turn two Bufalot attacking is actually fine. But not so much on the draw. You really want to be attacking with one of your guys on the first turn, though. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we do have switches in the deck. But it feels like having Ditto's just to pad the numbers a little bit. It'll be like one or two Ditto, maybe, would be nice to try. Uh, which is, we can, but we can it, again, it would be one of those things where, like, in theory, it sounds really good, but it's just a, as a deck I need a little bit more experience with to really try to be super creative with outside of just going with more of, like, a stock list. <laughs> uh, well, that's the Pokemon. We've, we've talked Ditto's possibility. We'll, yeah, we'll, I, I will, we'll, we'll hit up the supporters. The supporters, this is what we like to do. Normally, I'd like to say 4, 4, and 4, but guess what, guys? We do have the four Juniper and four N, like you're accustomed to, but only three Skyla in this deck. Do you want to talk about why that is? Um, we're not running any evolutions. We're not trying to hit a complex setup. We just need an addition. We just need more supporters than the ten that were allowed with the N's, Junipers, and Biancas. Like, you can't really go beyond two Biancas without feeling pretty bad about it because they they're not always all that good. And the more you have, Kelio. the worse they get. Yes, it is pretty good with Kelio, better than N in there <laughs> maybe, but. Um, I feel like we needed to make some room in this deck anyways. Like, we had to trim something. I think Skyla is going to be a little less effective. You don't have to get rare candies. You yeah. don't have to get complex stuff. It's you, not, it's you, not you, the deck it. demands less resources than other decks, so you don't need Skyla as heavily. Doesn't need to get uh, Beach. Doesn't need, it's not, it's you not, need to get Stadiums, which is kind of nice. But true. I think 3 is fine in this situation. Yeah, so, uh, so we have 2 Bianca, 4 N, 4 Juniper, 3 Skyla. That's the supporter line we're running. We're gonna, the, the, the trainers... Uh, uh, we're, the stadiums are important. The trainers are more important, but we'll get get through these right now because these stadiums are very good, not only with our Pokemon, but with uh, Tornadus in particular. The one that is actually new from Boundaries Cross is a Spurious City Gym, which gives your colorless Pokemon 20 more HP. That makes Tornadus... Is, is, I think it's actually Aspersha, maybe? As- yeah, no, we, we, don't, we don't like to actually go through real names. We've got a... <laughs> we've got a um, uh, so, uh, snoring drunk buddy <laughs> right now. <laughs> A verifiable Snorlax on the floor. But <laughs> so um, it gives you. But <laughs> no matter who is in the house, <laughs> twenty yeah. more HP to right. not, to colorless Pokemon. That makes a. Uh, he said Poofwat just a beefy, beefy, a beefy boy. buddy, like. a beefy boy, and uh, it makes your Big, uh, bad, beefy basic. <laughs> it make I think I think you could do the virtual like 120, 110 HP with the uh, Tornadus, which is just out of this world. You want the out of evil light in this period. Well, the Tornadus would have. Uh, in fact, a 210, you mean? You said 110. That's a 110? I think wow. you said 110. My 110 used wrong. to be a lot, yeah. but uh, 210 is now a lot. Uh, but uh, these are important to make your tax do 60, and they give uh, little bonuses. We're playing two Asperia. Asperia? Aspersia. Aspersia. I think. I could be wrong. Nope. Um, saloon. <laughs> <laughs> Saloon City Gym. Uh, so Aspersia City Saloon. There we go. So why uh, are we playing this many saloons? Um, it gives uh, extra hit points to your Tornadus, to your Bufalant. You need stadiums to key Tornadus' attack. And there's not a ton of great options. We run one Sky Arrow Bridge, mm-hmm. which allows us to cancel out a Spiritual City Gem when dealing with other that's a, that's a very, types. Very it's a rogue super strategy. insignificant advantage. But I can definitely see situations where I'd want to do it. And the advantage of and having... there are times when you want to have free retreat. Your, tor- your Tornadus' get free retreat, which is pretty big. It's like, I, I'm just not a, a massive fan of the Aspersia City gem. Like, it's probably the best stadium for the deck, but it doesn't actually do all that much to it. So I feel like, I don't know if I'd want three. I just like the ability to have a stadium that I can cancel something out with. Empty cards from your hand. Just little tiny things. It could just be correct it's, to play three Aspersia City Gems. That's another one you guys want to but, be playing out there, guys. No, at this point, like again, it's not you're not going to do too much damage to the deck by running the Sky Arrow, and I'm still at the point where like I have a pretty good understanding of the deck. It's been running pretty well for me, but at the same time, I'm still experimenting with a few things. So just being able to squeeze in one extra different card, you get to experience yeah. how it plays with the deck. It's a good and way without ruining it. Yeah. It's a great way to experience how the deck with that card added to it without really messing up the deck. Mm-hmm. So I, I, that's something I like doing a lot. Like It's a good way to maximize your playtesting experience. Yeah. Like, yeah. And you'll notice that with the tools here. And if you if you guys want to, when you're playing at home, try just try as many different stuff as you can when you're first playing. Like uh, we're playing one of each different tool. One of them is Evilite, uh, which is uh, it's an, it's another great card when you're that, playing only basics, I'll say. Right. I, I like it in this deck. I, I, I would like to have two of them. Yeah. I'll be honest. It's good. Um, 
I'll also be honest a second ago, like I was wondering why we had so much space in this deck, and I managed to stick a second EVO light in here. It was because I forgot to include the gems. Uh, uh, for the stadium. Yeah, I, I forgot so, too. We have had four. Like, I've, been test, I've been playing it with the stadiums, obviously, but then when I built it online, I <laughs> forgot to include them because it's something to overlook. I've done that with rare candies in decks before as well, and then I'll, like, I'll play them online, and I'm like, Man, I can't draw into a rare candy, and then oh, I realized like, two games later that I'm not running them. <laughs> so, yeah, those are, those are some losing streaks. <laughs> but no, we're going with one Evo Light. Uh, Tool Scrapper is pretty easy to play. Decks can run one of it with the Skyla, so like you're not really tanking as much as you'd like to with the with the card. It's really good with some of your Pokemon, so I like it. And then this is the one I like a little more, guys. This is Experiencer. Yeah, it's a little bit of an energy acceleration. It's another card that's really kind of uh, dangerous to. With tool scrapper because if they you can get blown out they you can, can get blown out your act doesn't even let your exp shared uh, ramp into your next dude blown out I've seen it happen I've done it like it's yeah it's another one of those cards where like when you play it a lot of times you're like all in on being able to use it too oh, yeah. so it's one of the situations where they do have the tool scrapper it's not just a low little blowout it's real bad it's huge folks. like I mean to be fair like sometimes if you use Evil Light to require a Pokemon to live well. Doing math for an exchange, it can also be a huge blowout. But I think it just feels worse when your experience share gets blown up. Oh, um, yeah. These are both cards I would love to have two of, and maybe one's better than the other. Maybe you can even shave something else to add two of one of them. Like these are cards that I feel one is the bare minimum on. I would love to have more copies of each, but again, this is a situation where you're trying to run a lot of diverse stuff. I mean, you do want to abuse the Skylas. We're not running four, but we still want to use them. You want to try it out, guys, from what we're saying. Uh, we're going to go into our A-spec slot. That's a computer search. If you're not using computer search, you're, you're doing, doing it wrong. wrong. We've talked about this before. So uh, here's the one card that we have a one of. of. It's Tool Scrapper. We just talked about how good it is. It could be a huge blowout. Uh, it's good against you in this deck. Um, could be better, but uh, we're playing one of it. Skyla makes it a little better. And in this deck... Um, we're a little bit more aggressive, so cards like Tool Scrapper are something we'd rather see. Right, we don't want to deal with uh, other EVO lights and exchanges. We don't want to deal with uh, their experience shares keying. Like you want to be able to deny on that. Like again, you're, you have the Skylas, so I just like one's fine. Putting a bunch of them in there. Um, the one thing is, I don't know how super necessary it is, just because you do run plus powers. So it's a situation where maybe that is better served as another tool. I think uh, I think something that we I don't think maybe discussed about in Eel Box. I've gotten a lot of why are we not playing Tool Scrapper in this deck? Blah blah blah. And I think it's just because uh, tools maybe Tool Scrapper scared them out, or or maybe that uh. It's weird because not, a lot of decks are not running tools as much as they were because they're of playing fear tool, of tool Scrapper, and they are playing Tool Scrapper still. So I want to say that there's going to be a point, guys, where <laughs> the people are going to stop playing the Tool Scrapper for the bluff, and maybe Evil Light comes back. But right right now. We're playing the one, and uh, we're, we're okay with yeah. it. Same thing. No, I actually Eels. did add one back into Eels oh. at a place of the uh, little Rayquaza. In case you guys were wondering, if you were watching our video. If you've seen the previous one, just take out the uh, the baby Rayquaza for a tool scrapper. I am not Oop. entirely convinced on it yet, but I, I was liking it. Uh, we do have another one of in the deck. That's uh, Enhanced Hammer. That discards a special energy. It's yes, like, it's too good to not play one copy of. It's I mean, you're going to get one big blowout with it. Like, it's not going to be as good as, like, the Hammer Time decks with uh, Sableye and stuff, but you can still get a huge tempo swing off of an Enhanced Hammer. Mm -hmm. This card wins games just as a one-off. Like, I so powerful. I love this card. I just think we two of them, and I'm fine with that even. I, uh, I actually asked him why there's not, we, we don't play more and then Crushing Hammer, and he just said there's no Sableye in it, and I agreed. And I thought I was an idiot for asking. Here's a card I like <laughs> a lot more. That's Energy Stash. That card is. This card's nutty, especially in this deck, especially when, uh, Man, it's just so good having uh, the Sky Bridge or Switch, which we're playing four of, and then being able to energy switch and just, just kind of just abuse a guy with like maybe a trachea yeah, out of nowhere. Literally them. abuse them. <laughs> abuse them out of nowhere with a trachea. The definition of destroying the competition. <laughs> Destroy the competition with this one card. We're playing two of it. Uh, moves one basic energy. Very basic, but very good. Right. Like It's a card that I fell in love with when playing uh, Electric, actually. And our Snorlax is uh, living up to his name, so he can turn to snore a little bit over here. So we got to keep him uh, reined in. <laughs> we have the Snorlax keeper in the back <laughs> here. <laughs> all right. Yeah, we're, we're trying to keep this serious for all you guys, but external circumstances are making that difficult. But uh, yeah, energy switch. Uh, it's another form of energy acceleration in the deck, basically. They're not one shotting you a lot of times. You can move the fighting energies around. It makes a card like Trachyon playable in here. 
I don't like dealing with track down when you can't power it up in one turn. I don't like them being able to just gust it and attack it before it's already retaliating. Or chill it up there. It's pretty difficult. Because yeah, this card's not... This deck's not great against them either. Uh, which no, is, we can get stuck pretty bad. Which, which we didn't talk about, but... Uh, and if you get that, that guy stuck up there and not have an energy switch to at least do something productive with it, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Or even on any four switches. Yeah. So, like, that's not so bad. Yeah, we're so we'll just, we'll, just, we'll just get switched right quick. There's four of them. We have a lot of basics. We're on four of a potential 55 switches in this deck, <laughs> by the way. And that's 55 switches of this particular artwork. Yeah, there's definitely, how many boosters there's definitely more of uh, the Heart Gold Soul Silver. But four of it, just because you got a lot of beefy boys in there. They're all have higher tree costs. You want to be able to attack early on. You don't want to get stuff stranded. And you want to be flexible in terms of what you're attacking with. And it works really well with the energy switch. Yeah, the, BB, so. the BBs need to attack. Uh, and the BBs like... The BB eating. BBs. The <laughs> pop quiz for all you viewers at home. We used that acronym earlier. What does it stand for? I don't think this is going to be on the YouTube. That's a B, big bitchin' boys. Uh, <laughs> that was I used something different that was actually appropriate. And <laughs> we, just, <laughs> we just violated our... Uh, uh, well, those trips, those trips were, Bs, trips Bs like to play Buckwire Catcher. Bs. But uh, I want quad trips? Bs. Yeah, there were four. Quad Bs? We, we can go back and see yeah, You failed the test. On this. You failed the pop quiz. What do these quad or trips Bs like to use? They like to eat small, smaller dudes. They love eating smaller small Bs. They like yeah. being smaller bees. We're playing for a Pokemon Catcher. We talked about the difference between an aggressive Catcher deck and a deck that likes to use Catcher. SPBs. They like to pick on SPBs. SPBs. <laughs> yeah, see if you can figure that one out. Small Pokemons? Oh, the P is different. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's small small something basics, but anyways. Uh, I'll let you guys... Fill it in at home. Yeah. Playing four of them, trying to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, yeah, one of them is reverse foil, so that is four in there. Uh, we we have three plus power. This is something we talked about in the puck one in the evil light section. Plus power is very good in this deck. Trying to be more aggressive. Plus power is um, for a couple reasons actually. Let me point yeah, out. Yeah, hit him on the hit him um, on the big ones. So first of all, it allows Tornadoes to do seventy in the first turn, which comes like a sable eye. Gives a little bit more reach. It also the math on that is sixty plus hundred is one sixty. So being able That's to like jump up to one seventy with a uh, Plus power is important. It lets you participate in the Mewtwo Wars with the DCE without having to have energy acceleration. It lets yeah, Landorus two shot a uh, Mewtwo Kelio. It lets it two oh, shot a yeah, Sableye. Landorus with say with uh, the uh, Hammerhead. It lets it hit that seventy mark. Um, yeah, it it also is. allows you to use uh, Land's Judgment. I believe is the name of the deck. Yes. Uh, without discarding energy to one shot a Dark Ride. That's, that's this is a lot of math that that card is very good with. Yeah, uh, guys, if you're going to be playing this this deck with plus power... There's another card that I might out. cut the suit, the tool scrapper for fourth one of those. I might cut the tool scrapper for another one of the tools. It goes it goes kind of back to what we were talking about with Catcher. We didn't hit on it hard, but it's an aggressive card. It's you want to pick on decks. You want to you want to get uh, up on prizes. Up on prizes and up. picking on decks. That's what this does best. Hey, there's Super Rod, our friend. We talk about it. We always play one of it. And we're not playing a lot of dudes in this deck. So. We know about it. We're a little light on energies, energies as well, uh, so that's one of those cards where we're doing like seven energies and that includes not a lot. If you have to, if you get your, your let's say a lander is killed and one Tra- tries, yeah, you want to be able yeah. to get some of these guys back. Like you're running one boot line, you're running one track handling like, against Sigla. If you want to have the ability to get back your oh yeah, if cards. you're kind of boned, if you don't have it against straight uh, right. Sigla, it's just a nice catch all like safety net. It's uh, not super valuable in this deck compared to others, hey, it's, but it's something you still run. Uh, that maybe might, might be space if you're that if you're being uh, a little gutsy. Here's the last card: four Ultra Ball gets any dude in our deck. Only have ten of them, but we definitely need to get them. Right. And this is another card I think you can get down to three on this with this deck because All you just need to have a lot of times if you don't have a specific basic, you're still in fairly good shape just because most of you guys are u- universally yeah. aggressive. And you're pressing the yeah, you're pressing the advantage. And you're with not the catchers, you can pick on things like you don't have to be reactive. You force them to answer you. And while it's nice to be able to be super picky with what you're attacking with, your worst case scenarios are generally going to be giving you something good here. And did we lock up? Oh, did we lock up? I'm not sure, guys. No. Uh, uh, you want to discard them? We do yeah. not. We do. We haven't changed anything. Well, we got to go back into it then. So. Uh, we're gonna, guys. We said we're gonna do a couple variants here. We're gonna hit up. Oh, did we cut? Did we touch on everything? Uh, another, I think I think we hit on everything in the deck there. If we um, forgot something, I apologize. It's probably fairly self-explanatory. And there might Pokemon, be overlap in the second deck. Pokemon, uh, Pokemon kind of crashed on us here. Uh, we're not sure. Oh, here we go. We're going back on... This is one... Uh, this is Burritos in honor of uh, Pablo Mesa. Hit, hit on the backstory. So, Mexican we loaded up. Player. 
Um, well, first of all, um, I've known Pablo for years. Absolutely fantastic player. Uh, tested with him in like 2006, 2007. Uh, great guy. So I figured in honor of our friendship that I have to make like a slightly racist, racist uh, deck name by calling him Burrito because he's from uh, Mexico. Um, see, the, the, this the, the program doesn't awful. even like racism. Like it's so <laughs> against it that it won't let us open the deck. <laughs> I love you, Pablo. Seriously. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna have to restart this. <laughs> uh, no, looks like we're new. looks like we're working. Let's let's try to get it going here. Oh, okay. Hey, there we go. This is another it's... variant of the big basics deck, and you're gonna see there's a little less basics and a lot more big because there's four Mewtwo, two Landorus, two Draken. I adore this deck. There's a lot this of big boys in this one. Is I played in. We played uh, some of these. On one of the <laughs> things that I've been playing in lately is that. Uh, message board and Facebook Facebook group that I've been a part of for years now, uh, Lafonte, has been holding weekly Pokemon trading card game online tournaments, just <laughs> amongst all our friends. And I played with Pablo the one week, and I ended up taking it to three games with the Eelbox, and the two games I lost, I had no supporters. But he was playing this deck, which I feel like I'm an underdog against anyways. You're playing we didn't, the Eels, right? Right, Eels, yes. Yes. And... I didn't necessarily... We didn't get very many good games in, but he's been tearing up those tournaments with this deck, and he's been saying it's pretty much the only deck that he's been having like really good luck with. So I give him enough benefit for the doubt to like have a lot of faith in his opinion towards decks, and he browned me pretty well. And, and he's, been playing his, like, he's been playing in tournaments with online with pretty much just all good players, and he's probably been doing as well as anybody else in those brackets. And... And then there was first ticket. And then there was first ticket. And then this there was is first something ticket. that he, I don't believe he was running, but <laughs> I feel like this is a deck to want to try it with. If you're getting away with only having eight basic Pokemon in it, I you're going first. I really want to be the guy who just like presses the advantage. Like you're not running Tornadus, so you don't have to stuff the deck with stadiums. Like you have a little bit more freedom in terms of what you're able to add. You have less basics. You don't have the stadiums. You have a lot more space to add stuff. So I figured, you know what, this would be my chance to experiment with first ticket a little bit more. And I think it's a very powerful card, it lets you be very aggressive, which is something that this deck needs. I mean, you'll notice you generally want to open with Mewtwo. Uh, so this card, my favorite card, if you notice the wording. <laughs> Before you flip a coin, decide who goes first in that to decide who goes first in that game. You may play this card. Don't flip that coin. You go first. If both players play first ticket, which will never happen, flip that coin as normal. Yeah, this should actually have the parentheses. This will never happen. <laughs> this will never happen. You may play only one first ticket. If you flip that coin, they refer to it as that coin. This is probably one of my favoritely favorite worded cards since uh, like Wizards of the Coast days because they just refer to it as that coin. But uh, <laughs> only eight Pokemon. Four Mewtwo's, you want to start Mewtwo, Landers and Trey or Landers. Trayton's still a little beefy, just like last deck, something we hit on. The Pokemon we probably it's don't have to talk about. You can break up the exchanges and stuff. Yeah. Like, Trayton's very good. And the Retaliate, especially if you start using Hammerhead a little bit, you can get some nice setup kills. You can get EXs with it, yeah. Yeah. Possible. I mean, it's challenging, but like it, it can get there. Um, energies, hey, funny story, we're playing one more energy than the other deck. Because we have more space. Yeah, like, we have more space. And it's good. It's good. We want the energies yeah, in the deck. The other deck is something I'd like to have 12 in. This is more of a uh, more of a concession to having to fit stadiums and yeah. a lot of the basics in there. And it's it's nice it's nice to have it like that. Uh, here here we have uh, here we have the uh, two evil lights, two XP shares again more space. What we were talking about in the other deck is like we would like that too. So this deck without playing tornadoes in the stadiums, which is kind of concession you're giving a little bit more uh, eh, maybe consistency, yeah. maybe not because you're not trying to you're not trying to jam the tornadoes in here. Which oh, you, are a bit high maintenance. <laughs> you get you could also run something like Buffalo in here theoretically. I don't think you yeah. can, like again. This is you have a nice pool of fighting and colors Pokemon that you can attack with, and they're all pretty good. And it's really going to come down to uh, personal preference on a lot of those. But um, we got the four Skylas in here. This this one has four, four, and four. Oh, ooh, and look, this. look at this. We have two oh. ju junipers. Is that is that correct? That is not correct. I not think correct. I, where did the fourth juniper go? Cause, okay, I Doesn't think exist. I know. Doesn't actually, exist. I know exactly what happened to the fourth juniper. Uh, I traded away some of the I other remember this. ones, I remember and this. I had to fill the card the cards in, and I didn't even think that one of the cards that was missing was a juniper. So let's see, what are we gonna cut for the juniper? Let's, Skyla? We didn't we talk about this? We can cut a Skyla, go? or we can cut an energy, and let, let's let's zoom up and see the the trainer here. Uh, well, we yeah, roll on it. Well, we'll go back this. to the supporters, folks. Uh, looks like we have as a quick overview. The obvious computer, computer search. search. Uh, two of these energy switches. Yes. 
Um, same, same logic as before. Um, one enhanced hammer. Um, four for his ticket. You gotta play four. Yeah, you wanna three go. plus power. Four. Oh, the ones ooh, different four. Art. I only have three of the uh, the better you, art. You have four now. And yeah, we have four. Four power. catcher, three switch, one tool scrapper, three ultra ball. Is there any cut you want to make to the fortune for, or is it Skyrim? Um, I think I cut the energy. Okay. Uh, like we said, I, our fo- folks. Uh, play 11 energy. That's 7 and 4. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we don't go with the Super Rod in this one. Uh, we have two of the Trachyons. We have mm-hmm. two, two, two of the Four Mewtwo's. Like, it's a little more condensed than what you're attacking with. This is more, uh, this is a more tunnel strategy, folks. You're going for this Again, you can, you can run, especially this is we're cutting the, uh, extra energy. You could theoretically run the Super Rod in here as well. And this is another situation where uh, the Tool Scrapper can also maybe be cut. Like, the same cards that were expendable before, a lot of the numbers can be tweaked. Like, I'm okay with only running three Ultra Balls here as search. You Again, it's really low, ma- low maintenance in terms of what you need to get set up. Um, I'd like to see a fourth switch in here as well. That was a card that is very good. Um, you can cut a Skyla. You can you could theoretically cut a plus power, but I like being really aggressive. I like this. the three. Again, the or tools the can go down to one in either one of them, I guess. I like being able to play the multiple copies of them because the decks that are running tool scrappers are generally only running one, so you can actually overload it a little bit with this deck. Yeah, you can you can get them with it. But we definitely need to get the extra juniper in there. Yeah, uh, the juniper's a must, but uh, a beef lot would be kind of nice. Yeah, this is this is basically a little bit different you strategy. Take out you basically are taking out the tornadoes. You're adding first it, tickets. You're being pretty aggressive. I feel like this is probably a little bit worse against uh, Kelly Blastoise. You yes. have the Tornadus as an attacking option. Tornit, yeah. But you do have you have Mewtwo, who is moderately good against them. Like if they're <laughs> it's attacking, not the problem is you have the the Landers is not very good against them. I, the I, Landers I, gets uh, absolutely destroyed. It gets brown pretty hard. But the reason I like this deck a little more is uh, if you're playing a big basic deck, and this is totally my opinion, is I want to be playing something like this that is just uh, it's deep. It knows it's deep. It's playing first ticket. It's playing Landers. It wants to start a good guy. And, and there you go. Like, I mean, uh, there are a lot of different strategies. You may see some different variants, but uh, a lot of the fighting double colors variant is what we've seen. Yeah. It's what and we're showing to you. I'm going to go as far as saying, Mark, I'm going to take the opposite road as you. I think I like the one with the Trinades a little bit better. Okay. But I I like this style of deck in general. Mm-hmm. And especially if you're in an area where you don't deal with nothing but Keldeo, which I feel like there's <laughs> Keldeo being played everywhere. But I'm not really nearly as much if it is, the, uh, let us know. Not nearly as much as it is here. I yeah. feel like we were, have a bit more than we probably should, and our metagame's a little bit skewed as a result of it. But um, one of the other things that when you're dealing with six decks, and we don't have this built, and I'm not super familiar with the deck, but there's, a, there's one that uh, Kyle Puka Sukovic has been playing. He did very well with it. It was a, like a ho based deck. The ho accelerant deck. So right, where he's using ho to facilitate... Energy switch, Junipers, and stuff like that. And you just discard things. It's a big basic stack with energy acceleration, and yeah. you run different types of energies. You run more over toolbox of attackers and everything. Very cool. And yeah. that's another one where it's like it's a little less streamlined than the super aggressive versions here. It can be very aggressive, but it's yeah. it's, it's yeah, really out there. And I feel like I'd be doing a disservice to the viewers here if I tried if to tried to mention it. It would be a, it would I be very could probably kind of build a list that is pretty reasonable. But it's something that I haven't played against a lot, and it's something I haven't used much. And I don't feel I could do it justice trying to describe it yet. Yeah, so, uh, uh, Holo... That's something that we're hopefully going to be having a deck tech up on. In my in opinion, future. in my opinion, it's I feel it's good. I think it's a little different. But, uh... Yeah, it's definitely said, different. These are, these are the really like, aggressive demands. decks. These are the really aggressive, big basic decks playing DCs and fighting energies. You've probably seen them in your area. Maybe a little different, maybe not. Uh, but, uh, if you're going to be going out to uh, cities, I would definitely recommend maybe... Going with uh, slanging some Landris, slanging some uh, cardboard yeah. that has a uh, big basic on it. So, uh, from Neo Streams, my name is Alex Shot. This is former national champion Chris Pullup. Again, so I love it when you say that. <laughs> so long from Neo Streams. Thank you for showing up, guys. Peace.